also in Toastmasters. So first, let's also invite Erin, <laughs> a very senior, he's very senior in Toastmaster and to give, the, give us the introduction of the manage, the time management. Thank you very much. Aaron. Yeah. So ladies and gentlemen, it's me again. Thank you for still, still staying around for, for the next part of managing time. Now managing time is actually pretty uh, of a project that I would like, I have a big problem, I have to confess. I am a person who filled with procrastination. So I am the one that really delays a lot of different things. So this project really helps me a lot of different, different aspects. So for those of you who still haven't known about managing time, this is the project for leadership development is the only required project in level two exclusively for leadership development. You will not be able to find this project in other paths. Now for this project itself, managing time is because a leader needs to manage time. So I'm a good leader. <laughs> I'm not, I need to train myself up in some way. So for that, I have to mute someone first. Okay, uh, for that, very simple speaking. Managing time is doing a lot time lock about your time, how you spend it for literally two weeks. And after which you have to share your report, share that story and tell it out in front of the whole audience. It's just like in a nutshell. So I will just slide, share the slide, share or else saying, this is what we have to do for this project. This project have a task, have an exercise. If you have done this exercise, good for you. If you're not, please remember to give it to evaluator. Usually we give it to evaluator for that person to see, but it's mainly for yourself, okay? So what does this time and task log help you? It helps you to identify which date you have done, what task you have done, plan time, and whether you're ending on time or you are procrastinating in some way. So it's more like self-reflective on yourself. If you notice in level two, level two projects actually focusing on understanding yourself, understanding your leadership, understanding your communication style, connect with your others, how you connect with people. Managing time is more on yourself. You want to know your strengths and weakness. That's why this project is meant there to really help leaders to on time management, which is something that I'm really weak at because I rather spend my time with my pillow. As you can see, I have a pillow beside my sofa. At any time I can sleep there, I just need to go for it. But is this the only task that we need to do? No, it's not. So I bring you guys, everyone, to the Toastmaster International page, whereby as you know, is on the main uh, base camp. So let's look at the key tasks. For this project itself, the purpose is to observe your own time management patterns. So after understanding then what, right? Do that speech. Now, as you develop a speech, record the time managed for each task, whether you're running over time or under time, maybe find out the reason why and how you determine yourself to improve on your time management strategies. Now, later on, there'll be a speaker that's going to share his own personal life about how lazy he can be. So don't worry, you enjoy the most out of it, but don't worry. Now let's move on to the next thing that we focus on competencies, which is the main aspects of this project. You can see that it helps you to identify and use a variety of time management techniques how you can actually control the time management in speeches too, like workshop speech, et cetera. And also helps you to identify the importance of time management skills. So this few things, uh, it requires application, it requires the understanding, et cetera. Now let's move on. So it helps you to, first of all, uh, help you set a goal. Now having you set a goal really helps you to plan your time wisely. Just like, for example, in this example, it says how to become a world champion of public speaking. Now, for members who have known that being a world champion of public speaking takes years. You need countless practice, countless time. So that's a long-term goal. Now, short-term goal may be that I want to be a District 71 champion. Now, that's an easier one because as long as I bribe Elizabeth, no, just kidding. As long as I'm able to, to, to exercise more, practice more in the different cultural speeches. Now, these are two goals whereby it helps you to plan your time. 
Now you can see that there's specific skill set, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time. Now, for those of you who actually break it down, you will understand this is a smart approach, S-M-A-R-T technique. So this S-M-A-R-T technique is actually helping you to set and plan your time wisely. So we usually use this as a protocol other than the exercise that we have talked about just now, the time log. We also have the smart approach for every single thing that we do and see whether it's practical and realistic to approach it. Now here it talks about time management skills. It gives you some techniques. Please take some time to read it. Uh, some, some, one, some common techniques that I, I find it useful when I read this part is that begin each day by taking 15 to 20 minutes or 30 minutes to plan activities. In the past, I never planned. I would just walk out the door and enjoy my day. <laughs> I don't really plan. Now, this is whereby it helps me to give a consolidated small habit. Now, there's a saying that small habits goes a long way. Now, small habits is whereby you practice these techniques and you can strongly control your time. Wonder why loads of contestants around the world get disqualified because of time. Why? It's because they didn't practice these time management skills. They may forget about it or may overlook it. So this actually helps you to attain a habit that helps you to improve a long way. There are some tasks, one a day and this adjustment. Now this adjustment part is something that I really put a, a star sign here because we only have 24 hours a day. What happens if we went delayed? Do, does it mean that our priorities for different tasks stop there or we have to cancel it? So adjustments are needed, but then adjustments are there like a warning sign so that we can see, oh, why are there so much adjustments? Why are there so much new tasks? Why didn't we anticipate before? These are some of the realization that we do for ourselves that maybe, just maybe, that originally we have key tasks every single day, but we may have overlooked because of new tasks that pops up. Now, this new task might be not important for you, but to you, it might be highly prioritized. So it depends on how you actually look at it in a different way. Now, looking even more, scrolling down, as I mentioned, the word prioritizing. If you actually break it down very clearly, while reading this manual so far until this very page, you realize that there are tasks that is important and highly prioritized as the first category. If you look at the first category, this is the one key component. Now, there are tasks that are important but less prioritized. Now, using this theory and going on, there are tasks that are not important but highly prioritized and also unimportant and not prioritized. So there are four different groups for you to identify. Just until this very page, you know that there is a sequence like that. So it helps you to actually create a graph. By now, you might have created a graph just like what we have just mentioned. Do a, take a piece of paper, draw the, the graph out, and you notice that what are your tasks that you prioritize and is very important. Are they really that important? Identify that, okay? This is whereby we try to look at it things of a further approach. Now let's look on. Now, as, as mentioned, you have to keep track of time. The reason why we keep track of time is to realize how many unimportant stuff that we have in our lives and how many important ones that we do, but we overlooked it because of adjustments. So this time management techniques is really good to me. I still use it to this very day. Recognized. Recognize that you are procrastinating. Yes, I am, okay? I do recognize it, I do admit it, so how? So what should I do next? If you find yourself filling your day with low priority tasks, such as Toastmasters, or, or waiting for the right time to accomplish goals, you might be procrastinating. So sometimes I spend too much time on Toastmasters and not on my work. So this is maybe the reason, huh? Now determine then. Now determine that you are procrastinating, you might be avoiding some stuff. So if you're avoiding, you realize you're avoiding, ask yourself why. Is it you're tired, overwhelmed, or is it because you just don't want to do? 
If you understand it, then you will be able to solve your problem. Understanding is the first step of healing. That's a, that's a saying in Harry Potter's book. Understanding is the first step of healing or basic, under, or basic communication. With communication, then it proceeds on to something else. Now adopt the next thing is once you realize the reasons, now take different steps of how you overcome your reluctance, your procrastination. Now, why do we have to do these techniques? It's because you're going to do a five to seven minute speech later on, on what aspects you're procrastinating and how you overcome it. Okay, the first few minutes may be realization of your procrastination or why you spend your time there mostly. And then focus on the things that you want to do more. Now, there are different case scenarios that you can do here. Uh, I'm not going to do it today because we're going to focus more on the meaning on the time. Make sure that you focus on some exercise. There's a weekly hour 10 minute rule. Uh, 10 minute rule is actually pretty good. I will highly suggest this method to do it. 10 minutes rule is like uh, work on the task and how you actually overcome it. Even though you're forced to not to do it, try the 10 minutes rule technique is pretty good. And then there are some Q&A questions whereby you can help you to identify and prioritize which one is more important. After which review and apply. And finally, you're going to do your speech. Now for all Toastmasters that we have talked in the introduction to Toastmaster pathways, we tell everyone to print the project. The reason why it's printing the project is because we can read the whole thing. Now let's look at the evaluations one by one. Or rather saying that the evaluation here. The purpose of this project is to observe his or her time management patterns. Now, if you're going to do a speech that's five to seven minutes just on time management patterns, well, you're wrong. <laughs> okay, why? It's because look at, although this is objective, look at this notes to evaluator, okay? It says, the member may choose to speak a high management exercise. The word is may. You can add it on or not, it's your choice. But the point of adding it on is more for you to see whether your actions work and for you to self-reflect on yourself on what other aspects can you improve on. So this is really important. I will definitely add a time management exercise in there because I want to make my speech more valuable. Okay. Otherwise members will not listen to it. So these are the few things that we want to highlight for this project. It looks like a very simple one, but it has loads of different underlying fundamentals there. Okay, very basic stuff that we usually overlook, the smart approach, etc. So this is the analysis so far, and we have a demo speech. Let me invite Crystal up the stage again, if Crystal is there, or is she lagged out? Yeah, no, I'm still here. Thanks, Aaron. I think you are an expert of time management. You are the expert. Yeah, after listening to your explanation about the time management, I'm also gonna look forward to your exercise about time, man time management. So <laughs> what's your, yeah, I think, oh, sorry, my, the, the internet is not very good. No worries, we can still hear you. Yeah, so, oh, still can hear me? Okay, so, so can you please give us a speech about your time management exercise? Okay, sure. Now, before we go on, today the speech is done by me, and then my evaluator is Angela Lee, which is hiding in the crowd right now. So this speech wow. is, as, well, as mentioned, is five to seven minutes speech. Very sad, because I'm going to share five minutes to seven minutes of my embarrassment. Now, ladies and gentlemen, fellow Toastmasters, now is the time whereby I'm sharing my managing time speech. Now, for those of you who kind of know me for the past few months, you will notice that I start to get a bit of burnout. Now, I don't mean burnout from my fat belly exercises, but I was referring to the main point of me spending too much time on Toastmasters. Why? Because I was doing this managing time exercise and look at the following or just hear the followings. 
typical day of Aaron. Day one, 6 a.m. wake up for a Toastmaster general evaluation speech. Moving on, 8 a.m. Aaron is taking a bus to his work and preparing his Toastmaster speech for another workshop. 9 a.m. Reach office. Spending 15 minutes eating coffee, no, eating bun and coffee, drinking coffee, while listening to a workshop speech. All related to Toastmasters. Now, if I'm not crazy, then I don't know what is. I spend the first three hours on doing everything of my daily life, including washing and listening. Even when I'm bathing, I still listen to Toastmaster speech. Now, this is something wrong there, just by day one. Now, when, when it's a day one part, oh my gosh, where am my priority? Is my priority my job or my Toastmasters? There's a difference. Okay, for the first three hours, I realized something is terribly wrong. Continuing on, from 9 to 12 p.m., a a a PM. You cannot have to master, so that time is normal working hours. Full stop. Great, working in a proper time. I'm finally working as a proper thing. One one PM preparing for lunch with colleagues. One PM to two fifteen. Forgotten that Aaron has an immediate workshop in another district. Ah, gosh. And this is only day one. And I forget about something that is very important. Now, what I did next in the task itself is that I have to talk with the colleague, hold my phone with my ear set, and then talking to them and talking to the microphone. Hey, 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 everyone. I think I'm going to do a workshop. And that workshop lasts for 30 minutes. So you have to have 30 minutes of uninterrupted attention. Now, this pisses my colleagues off. Technically speaking. Now moving on, after after the time, one, uh, two p.m. to five p.m. normal working hours, five p.m. to twelve p.m. I notice my task is actually listed as follows: heading home, Toastmaster speeches, heading home, preparing for a workshop at twelve a.m. in the morning, heading home for dinner, and then planning for my work at four a.m., sleeping at five. Now, just day one, 80% of my work is toast. Not drinking toast, but Toastmasters. Now, just day one, I noticed this also issues. Not just day one itself. I noticed that day one to day seven, I have repeated of 60% of my time given to Toastmasters. <sighs> I hate myself. Now, if that doesn't affect my job, then what will? Now, day two, and as I mentioned, day two and onwards are similar in nature. So I realize that something is terribly wrong. Maybe I have set my goals too much on Toastmasters instead of my own work. So I sat down, put on a piece of paper, put my smart techniques, put it very clearly on how I prepared my speech or how I prepared my daily lives. So my goal, become an impactful speaker. Yes, I'm working towards that. That's Toastmasters. Long-term goal, have a reliable job and buy a house or more. Yeah, I should focus on this long-term. Then what should I do? Not public speaking, but I should focus more on my main work. So I start to make it very nicely as in techniques to readjust, my mo readjust myself. From the past 40 hours in this time lock itself, 40-ish hours plus, 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 I want to readjust myself in a different way. How? First of all, any Toastmaster request, full stop. I'm going to put a pause there. I only limit myself one week, maximum four hours. Four hours. No matter how, how well I spend my four hours, those are many for Toastmasters. That's all. Other time, sleep, eat healthily, don't get fat, etc. Okay, moving on, stepping on. I focus more time on how I actually find my prop another alternative job. Went to Hunter, creating LinkedIn, making sure my name branding actually exists, creating my blog, etc. 
more, more for work basis. Doing workshop that is paid. Okay, that's a difference, okay? I've been doing workshop that is not paid. So workshop paid has to take over the ones that is unpaid. So I went to a, a, approach different companies. So I spent most of my time in the next week that I discover the issues, more time on finding jobs, more time on actually contracting with different companies. So I adjusted totally, only 10% of my time is only on Toastmasters from originally 70 to 80%. Now that's a very big change in some way. Number one, that lesson, lesson that I learned from this project itself. I realized that once you get too intoxicated in something that you like, you go nuts. You forget that you cannot even manage time. Number two, focus on the things that is really clear and prioritize. Toastmaster is a hobby, not a job for me, okay? Point number three, focusing on things that are very valuable and really more for my sake, really like enjoying the scenery, walking in parks, playing my favorite Chinese shuttlecock games as some of the things that you do love into my daily life instead of just Zooming every day, okay? So after learning from these three lessons, I think I stopped being too procrastinated. I'm still procrastinating this very day. I only try to reduce it day by day. We can't avoid procrastination because I realize the deepest part of me of why I have been procrastinating is because I'm burned out. Now, this is a very big problem. If you're burned out, you need to rest and find the motivation back. Now, this takes time. It cannot be done just in one speech. It takes many, many times of reflection that you can improve and further yourself. So that's all for my speech for today. I'll pass the stage to Crystal to introduce our evaluator. Yeah, thank you, Irene. Thank you. I think your, <laughs> your speech is very benefit for me because you know, I have, a, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm procrastination, you know? Yeah, so maybe I need to adjust and adopt to my current tasks and okay set the prioritize for my for all my tasks okay thank you so let's let's invite our evaluator angela angela are you here ah uh, yes yes i'm here good evening fellow members ladies and gentlemen especially to uh aaron uh, as you all know aaron is a very uh, good speaker and uh, the the topic is about management time I think management time is uh, most of all uh, for some people. This is a sort of a habit because we all uh, know how to use our time wisely. But I know uh, time management is a little bit hard for Aaron because of his um, daily habits. As you can imagine, Aaron is a very hard working Toastmaster. It's very, uh, got a very pattern. He even have a, you know, daily uh, log sheet about how he use his time, 80% of time using for Toastmasters, which is very unhealthy. And I'm glad that uh, Aaron know about this. And that's uh, good news is that Aaron discovered that and he changed it to reduce it and you know, transfer to 10%. And congratulations that you really reduced the time spending on Toastmaster. I don't know whether it is true or not. I, I suppose it is, but I still sense that you are working very hard on Toastmaster, uh, workshop speaking, and so on. So I think the most important part is that you are a very humorous speech speaker because you said you spend only one minute a time for a toast, but one day for Toastmasters. So it's really uh, hu humorous. And I also like uh, your speech, how you transform from a uh, addicted to Toastmaster 
let you uh, run a little bit away from Toastmaster and try to find a job, which is very good. But what I would like to know about that, how are you going to management your time now? Because you have mentioned that your daily log, but how you can improve it in your future time? It doesn't tell us much, although you mentioned about the smile, uh, uh, smart uh, technique, but you don't know, but you don't uh, really share with us how you can do it. Of course, it is a quick direction from 80 to 10%. But have you got any proof or have you got any real example that you really change from 80% to 10%? This is very important. And I joy, and I joy, uh, enjoy Aaron's speech. Perhaps you can, could have some pauses during your speech when you change from 80% to 10% and how you can, your procrastination will turn into your improvement, how to manage your time. So thank you for sharing. And I hope that managing time is your great success in the future. And I hope that you will find your job very soon. Thank you. Thank you, Angela, for your evaluation. Yeah. We learned a lot from you too. Okay. Let's go to the next part. Next part is a panel. So during this part, uh, I hope every, I hope uh, our guest, so, oh, sorry. Let's, let me introduce our guest first. Uh, in this panel roundtable discussion, we will have Erin, our uh, prepared speaker, and Angela. I think we also have Angela, right? Oh, she's not here. Oh, she's back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry. I take her back. I just got a, a, a coffee. I uh, just say a tea, okay? So I'm coming back. Yeah, enjoy a tea. Okay, and we also have the. Uh, Ophelia, are you still here? I'm here. Yeah, and Ivan left. So we have three guests in this panel discussion. So our guest, could you please just give us uh, your, um, just brief your managing time exercise, good practice or some suggestions for our, for the, Fresh Toastmasters to this pathway. Do you have any? I think I will kick off first uh, for that. Uh, it reminds me because just for everyone's notice that Angela is like a godmother to me <laughs> <laughs> because she had really? like seen me uh, from the start that I, I when I joined first joined Toastmasters, she was there. Now, me and her had a very, very unique relationship in terms of actually catching time. Now, every time I actually meet up with Angela in the past, she hates me for it. Now, let me explain a little story about that. It's actually related to this project itself. Every time I ask Angela out in the past, I am always late. Angela, remember that I was always late, right? Yeah, that's <laughs> I, true. I was usually, that's I'm true. always late. And I'm so I, always not yeah. managing my time. And, he, and she hate me. Real literally, because like, Aaron, you're wasting my time you know, in that point. So what I did that time is that I start to realize that my time, my lateness actually make people unhappy. Now, which is true. If people are late, I'm fine. But that doesn't mean that they are, they are fine in the other way. So what happens next is that I try to reduce my time, like what, figure out the reasons why I cannot even make, on, make myself on time for different events. Now, or, or meeting with Angela. So I actually did some different exercise saying, that, oh, it's because of my habit. Now, habit-wise is that I usually had a tendency in the past, just letting everyone know, that before, I, if I meet someone at 1 p.m., I only leave at 1.45. No, no, oh, oh no, I don't leave 1.45, sorry, 12.45. I meet one person at 1 p.m., 
12.45, no matter how far that is. So it includes taking a taxi because I want to procrastinate until this remote. I have to leave that home or I have to go out somewhere. So this is really important for me that I realize that I've been delaying myself on things that is not really that important, such as wasting my time in reading a book when I should have just gone and take a bus, for example. So for me, exercise number one, pack your time wisely, and that will help me better understand the reasons why and reduce the problems. I'll pass the stage to Angela. Yeah. Uh, good evening, fellow members, ladies and gentlemen. Actually, my timing is also having time slot. Usually, I wake up early before, but now I uh, wake up uh, a little bit late. Usually, I work up at 6 a.m., then I will read something. For example, Reader's Digest, Toastmaster magazines, or books that I, I, I would like to, to look at. Then I'm going to swim at 7 a.m., and then for one hour, then I'm going to prepare to work, to take uh, MTL to go to work. Then during this uh, period, I will focus on my work without any interruption. What Toastmaster, whatever, I will just simply ignore and do not answer WhatsApp, whatever. So um, then I will focus on public speaking, uh, my piano lesson, and also Bible study fellowship. These are the three uh, study that I would like to pursue on because I think that uh, piano practicing can make me calm and also public speaking can make me become a better communicator as well as a good leader. Also have the time to interact with all the people around the world. And Bible study fellowship is that what I would like to read from the Bible to get some wisdom from uh, the Bible so that I can have a very good uh, life pattern. This is what I think, but may, you might think otherwise. So these are four core things that I would like to do. And uh, of course, uh, you know, because of, you know, uh, time limit. So I, I, I will share with you the detail later on. Perhaps I can pass the uh, time to another speaker, and then I can add on later. You can have Ophelia or Sandy to actually share. Your... Yeah, Ophelia, or you can talk about a little, then I will add on later. Okay. So, uh, as for me, because I'm a student, Time management is also exceptionally important for for my for me and my and my studies. I'm an MA student currently, so every day I will also wake up early. Although although yeah although yes, yeah, students are sometimes local students are known to be to be late to be latecomers by waking up late because of because of some uh, because of different matters but waking up early is actually a benefit for you to plan for you to plan early and for you to plan early and also know what and also know what you're focusing for today so after waking up i would play some refreshing music to truly wake to truly wake my brain up even though my body even though i have left the bed at that time then I will take the I will take the MTR to to HKU. Uh, that's quite a distance from my home to there. And on the way, I will I will watch video. I will watch beneficial videos, read articles or my materials that I haven't finished for my courses. Then after I reach the then after I reach the university to prevent myself from procrastination, I will go to a study space to revise, study, and also and also review my materials. At the same time, I will also follow up. I will also follow up uh, on my Toastmaster on my Toastmasters matters, like my my area director work duties. But here's one thing: multitasking is probably one of the is probably one of the ways to cope with 
to cope with a huge workload. But if you but if you cannot man if you do not manage well, it can be disastrous. So during so sometimes when I'm working on some serial tasks, like when I'm writing an essay, when I'm preparing for a test or an essay exam, I would definitely put everything away and focus on my reading materials instead of letting other things to disturb and distract me. So time many so as for me, what advice I would I would give based on time management? Uh, the only advice is that you can you can try to multitask if you can, but don't let multiple tasks distract you. Otherwise, your workload it's not going to be your work, your work quality is not going to be really good. And also the old saying goes, the early bird gets the gets the worm. So sometimes try to wake up early so that you won't miss so that you have proper you have enough time to plan well and also try to spend your and also try to spend to manage your manage your duties efficiently. Maybe Chris story is busy. Sandy, do you have any sh sharing is about managing time? Uh, for me, as I get older, I would think manage my energy is much more important by managing numbers. I mean, an outcome. Because for me, I would think about, I would check. Uh, this is the suggestion from my another friend. It would be. At the end of the day, I would check my achievement. And also I found that at the end of the day, and also at the end of the working week, I was a disaster. So for me it would be, uh, I need to find out when it's, when, it's, when it's okay for me to be energetic. I will put, uh, I will kind of like finish like 60% of the things that I wanted to do. And then after that, I'll kind of lose myself for like two hours and then I have to go out or something. So for me, I don't really manage uh, the numbers, but I manage my time. I try to find out when I was energetic and I will squeeze all my efforts. And then I, after that, I would just, I'm fine with the low proficiency or low performance or something. So I will kind of lost like 10%, something, let something go. That's me recently. Yeah, uh, actually I have a, 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 a plan that was failure. I remember that when I, I, I think that if I wake up early, for example, five o'clock, then I have two hour more to do something, but it doesn't work after 14 days. Why? Because I fell asleep, I, I fell uh, sleeping you know, during the lunch hour, because it, it is too, it was too tiring. So I now I couldn't wake up at uh, five o'clock, I could wake up at eight o'clock or seven o'clock on Sunday, then I would uh, wake up a little bit late. So sometimes you have a biological, uh, you have to sense your biological cycle, which suits you well. And I think what I uh, notice is that Aaron is a very kind and a very uh, helpful people. That's why his time management was sometimes, you know, uh, interrupted by his kindness. He would like to help people so the time management doesn't seem important to him. Manage, I mean, human relationships are more important. So the balance wasn't there. That is what I would like to say. And for me, time management is very important. If your time management is good, that means in all aspects of your life, your body, your study, your work will be equally balanced. But of course, this, you have to have a very um, focused and very disciplined, disciplined person so you can manage to do it. Otherwise, if you are an emotional person, you, you are a kind person, sometimes the task and also the uh, human uh, aspect 
doesn't balance, so there will be a disaster on your time management. This is what I would like to share with all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Angela. Thanks. Thanks all. So during the panel discussion, I received some questions from our from the attendees. So let's let's move to the the final part, the QA section. So first, can I invite Lillian? Lillian, are you still here? Lillian? No. Uh, hi. Hi, Lillian. Uh, yeah. I think you have a question for, for our guest. Actually, I have a, I have a question for, for, for Sandy. Sandy. Okay. Uh, my, 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 my question is, uh, when you when you first come to when you first come come to the stage, uh, do you feel a little bit nervous? And and how and how to how to how to uh how to how to achieve your your goal in 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 the top master plan. That's my question, Sandy. I think in you, short, her question is related to how do you overcome your panic, your 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 fear, in in public speaking in your Toastmaster journey. I think that's the question, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, practice until I feel comfortable, and two, be fake until I make it. And three, mm -hmm. try to uh, mm -hmm. lie to myself. Nervousness didn't really kill me and make me stronger. Mm -hmm. uh, those three steps work and recycle. One would be practice. I need to do practice. For example, Aaron is my mentor. I, pra I, I practice a lot when I uh, have to hand him my homework. Two would be I fake it would be I pretend I was a, a professional trainer so I pretend that I am so I was preparing for that and then second would be although I'm nervous and I'm resistant I was not a professional trainer but when I talked to him he didn't really give me a harsh or bad feedback and then and I fake it and I did I think while while my mentor didn't say anything bad that means I passed. And those three circles goes on and on and on. You can look at his face. It's how I survive. And also how I survive the uh, public speaking world. Do I have to demo one more time? I think we understood though. Yeah. Thank you, Sandy. We have a question though. Uh, send, uh, Crystal, would you like to ask a question? Yeah, sure. I saw that. A uh, question from Thomas. How do we allow the flexibility in time schedule? How do we allow flexibility in time schedule? So uh, any guest can answer this question? I actually want to <coughs> oh, talk about Ophelia. Oh, Ophelia, oh, yeah, yeah, I saw you. Yeah, please. So if you're talking about flexibility in planning your time schedule, I guess my my advice would be try to prior, prioritize your work. Think about the debt, the urgent, the urgent deadlines you're going to face. For example, if you're going to have an assignment due next week or a, or an upcoming presentation coming up, but you haven't prepared yet and the deadline is pretty close. Well, you have several other deadlines piling up behind the early deadlines. So in this case, that's what I, this is also what I'm facing right now in my, in my master's studies. So in this case, I would definitely, I would focus on the things that are, that will be due very soon. So for example, so in my case, 
I got a presentation coming up uh, on next Monday. It's about uh, it's about a research topic presentation. Since this one is pretty is pretty urgent, I decided to put it in front of put it in front of my schedule so that this is going to be my first task that I'm going to work with once I've I've returned to to the study to the study spaces with my laptop. Then you can then you can start to work on you can start to work on something you can start to work on your other deadlines but sometimes in some deadlines if it's a complicated task try to break them down break them into small parts don't try to do everything at once that will only exhaust you so maybe try to do one maybe if you're if you're facing a huge project try to break them into parts spend some days to finish this part give a deadline to to these tasks to when you to when you're going to finish the task before moving on to another part, another set of tasks that way you're not going to you're not going to exhaust yourself and don't don't forget to take breaks during uh, after you finish your work reward yourself you've finished something you've done a great job just just give yourself a break instead of trying to instead of being a workaholic and that will eventually that will eventually backfire so this is so these are my advice if, regarding to providing flex, flexibility in, in in time schedules hope this helps thanks Thanks, Ophelia. Yeah, thanks for answering. So Thomas, is that helpful for you and answer your questions? Okay, so anyone have the question? Anyone has a question for our guest about managing time? No? Okay, so Aaron, do you have something to speak about the closing? Oh, the closing. Okay, so uh, very thank yeah. uh, thanks for everyone. Nice. Don't worry, time really flies. And and today I have to really congratulate that in our pathway series, this is the first time ever that we are making within our time. We are not in overtime too much. Usually in the past we overtime until like ten p.m. or eleven, but today we are within time. So give a round of applause for everyone, especially Crystal as well, to keep everything on time. Okay, give a round of applause. For that. And most importantly for you out there to have available session that you can see from different perspective of how to approach the manuals. Uh, we will definitely have a fresh new face to do uh, analysis for different projects in the future. Don't worry about that. But today's session will be officially closed, but don't go yet. We can still take a picture. And two, after this session, if you have any pathways question, fire away. We will answer until you have no questions about pathways. I, I let me tell you that if you have any questions about pathways and you still have it, I will answer until you have no questions. I will spend the next three hours or six hours of not managing my time wisely just to answer your question. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, officially conclude this time. Uh, give a round of applause for our Ophelia, Sandy, Angela, Crystal, Ivan as well. We have so many people that helps today. I think Sandy has some presents for you. Do you have it? You have, right? So we have a slight surprise. We have a slight surprise for all of you because we usually recognize and we do. Uh, Sandy, have you prepared the presents? <laughs> Yay. Oh, typo error. That's no H. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I was helping the training, so okay. So, okay, uh, trainer, thank you very much, Aaron, for giving us your wisdom or and your time, and also for me as a demo speaker, and uh, and also Aaron as a demo speaker, and Angela for evaluator. 
And also, I have three evaluators, uh, Ophelia, or three, and Aaron. Thank you very much. It's once in my lifetime. I didn't really have three evaluators. And also, for a facilitator, uh, thank you very much uh, for help us to conduct all the things. And also, uh, panelists, panelists, and panelists, Ophelia, and also people who get involved. Thank you very much. We had a good time. Thank you very much. So the recordings have ended. Don't worry. Uh, I will actually stop the recording.